Hey YouTube, MaxZ2021 here coming at you with a manga discussion video this time with my thoughts on Muyo and Roji's Bureau of Supernatural Investigation. Or if you want to shorten it, Muyo and Roji's BSI according to the uh, spine for all 18 volumes. Or if you want to shorten it even further, Muyo and Roji. Just Muyo and Roji. That's what I usually refer to it by since it's the shortest one. Uh, anyways, it's a, uh, supernatural mystery manga. Um, there is some comedy sprinkled in here and there. And there's action as well. Though not something like out of a, a battle manga. If I had to, uh, compare it to anything, um... I also uh, wrote down a bunch of stuff on a piece of paper, so I wouldn't forget any uh, info that I would want to share while doing this video. I actually almost finished making this. I had about 20 minutes recorded, and then my phone ran out of space, so I had to clear up a bunch of stuff. Disregard that. Um, Alright, here's some background info. This manga was published in Weekly Shonen Jump. From November 2000, November 29th, 2004, all the way to March 3rd, 2018. I mean, 2008. Uh, I'm getting my dates mixed up. Uh, it was written and illustrated by Yoshiyuki Nishi. Um, he was also a assistant for Takeshi Obata, apparently, according to the... The page for him on my anime list. Uh, for those that don't know who Takeshi Obata is, he's the artist behind uh, such hits as uh, Death Note, Bakuman, uh, Platinum End, the manga adaptation of All You Need Is Kill, uh, Rograd, who was character designer for Castlevania Judgment, uh, the only fighting game in the Castlevania series, as far as I'm aware. Uh, what else did he do? Uh, oh yeah, he also did Hikaru no Go, the art for that. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure he's done other stuff, but that's just some stuff he did. Anyways, back to Yoshiyuki Nishi. He had a few manga that lasted about one to three volumes between 2008 and 2014. His current series is published in a seinen manga magazine as of, uh, what is it? Uh, October 27th, 2016, so give or take a year, and, um, yeah, that's all I really know about that, um, anyways, back to Muyo and Roji, uh, the English release for all 18 volumes, let me, uh, pull this up, well, here's all... 18 volumes. The English release was handled by Viz Media. They released, I mean, they published it in English from October 2nd, 2007, all the way to August 3rd, excuse me, 2010, with volumes 1 through 12 going for $7.99. And then uh, that whole price jump thing kicked in around then, and volumes 13 through 18 go for $9.99. I went and double-checked on Amazon and cross-referenced cross the prices I saw on there with my volumes. And um, they're still going for the same prices as what's on the volumes, so that's cool. Um... Let's see. I guess I should talk about the plot. So there's these two guys named uh, Muyo and Roji, as the title would lead someone to believe. There's Muyo, the short guy, and Roji, the tall guy. And uh, they are magic law practitioners. They run a agency... And basically, they go around solving uh, crimes, dealing with ghosts, spirits, and the like. 
and um, uh, Roji, what he does is he uses uh, wards and uh, charms and talismans, uh, stuff like that to either put up like protective, I mean protection against uh, the ghost and whatnot for either him or Muyo or anyone else that's with them. And, uh, I mean, either that or he, uh, uh, stun locks the ghost they're going up against with his, uh, wards and binding stuff. And then Muyo, he whips out this big old book and he reads from it. He says, um, for committing, uh, such and such crime against, uh, people, uh, I send you to, uh, this thing. And he, um, he says the name of whatever, uh, articles, such and such, and, um, uh, and then he summons a thing, and something comes, it gets the ghost, and they, uh, they normally go down to hell, depending on how severe the crime is that the ghost or spirit committed. Whether it's a haunting or a possession or uh, something, I don't know. But there are instances where if a uh, spirit or ghost or whatever um, ends up, uh, ends up um, repenting or or uh, coming to their senses, I suppose, they have a chance to ascend to heaven by going to limbo or whatever, and so they can um, be cleansed, and then they can ascend to heaven, so that's cool and good. Um, let's see, what should I talk about next? Yeah, that's that's basically what Muyo and Roji are doing. That's their uh, practice, their job, what they do for work. Uh, volumes 1 and I want to say the beginning of Volume 2 or half of Volume 2 are rather episodic in nature. Mostly because of the stories that take place in them... Uh, don't really connect much, I, I suppose. Um, let me think. But after that, for the rest of Volume 2, and then... Wait, give me a sec. Come on, stop it, you two. Had to stop the cats from fighting. It looked like they were about to get into it. Anyways, uh... For like half, I mean, second half of Volume 2 all the way up to Volume 15. But then the Volume 15, it's one continuous overarching story plot. Uh, or pretty much uh, Muyo Roji and their uh, comrades go up against this guy. Who's uh, a former friend. And uh, they gotta deal with him and the group of, um, uh, bad magic law practitioners who do, um, uh, oh, forbidden magic law. Yeah, they, they do the bad kind of magic law that, um, that deals with, like, summoning ghosts and turning people into ghosts and, uh, all that, all that crazy shit. So, um, yeah, that's the majority of what happens between, uh, half, I mean, second half of Volume 2 and the end of Volume 15. Uh, there's a training arc in Volume 7 that, that deals with, uh, Roji, and he gets some growth, character development growth. That was pretty neat. Uh, volume 8, a uh, rival character shows up, and Muyo and Roji gotta deal with him, and that guy's assistant. 
And then there's a rescue arc somewhere around volume 10 or 11. And, uh, I think my cat saw something. Anyways, uh, volume 16. Uh, yeah, it could have ended at volume 15, but it kept going. Nothing wrong with that. Volume 16 at, uh, terms of the episodic formula, format. Uh, <coughs> uh, there's, uh, like, three separate stories, one's just a chapter long, second one's two chapters, third one's four or five chapters, and then the last chapter, volume 16, starts one of the last two story arcs, unless it's one whole story arc, and I'm separating stuff, uh, anyways... Uh, in volume 16, that's when the last, I mean, the, the series starts to come to a close. I, I think it might have been rushed. I don't know. It feels like, uh, he was starting to build up something, and then it, it just gets resolved relatively fast. I mean, it, it takes a whole volume and two chapters for it to, to get resolved or whatever, and then some more stuff happens after the final conflict, I guess. Uh, I guess it ends on a good note. I mean, it, it feels like, while it was a, <coughs> a bit rushed, I feel like he was able to get enough content in at the tail end of it to where there's a sense of closure, Though in the afterwards that he left at the end of volume 18, he said something along the lines of, I think he might have wished he could have put a little more in there, but he felt content with how it ended. I think uh, that uh, I, I could be remembering it wrong or quoting it wrong. That's besides the point. Um. So, uh, yeah, that's... The basic, uh, setup and overall overarching plot structure, story structure for the series. So that's all fine and dandy. Um, let's see, what did I want to talk about? I want to check this, uh, piece of paper. Uh, there's also a one shot at the end of volume one. Which I believe, um, according to author notes, that was the one that was uh, published in Weekly Shonen Jump before, I mean, right before the uh, series got officially serialized. And then at the end of volume 18, there's another one shot, which I think was the prototype for the one shot in volume 1. So I think of it as like two one shots. That's cool. Um, things that I liked about it. I definitely liked the art. Felt like there was a bit of a roundness to plenty of the characters. Specifically with like the head shapes. Uh, and, and I guess the way their bodies were drawn. Uh, I definitely like the designs for the ghosts and spirits and the Stuff that gets summoned by the magic law practitioners. I think those were really well done. Definitely, I mean, the ghosts definitely had a nice horror element to them. Made you go, oh yeah, these are definitely ghosts, all right. I had a... Yeah, they had a bit of a, a freaky side to them, I suppose. Uh, it was pretty effective stuff. Nice body horror, kind of like uh, something you'd see in a Yume Nikki or Dot Flow or any other Yume Nikki fan game. Uh, one thing that I do like about the uh, volume covers, uh, let me find one. Uh, they do this uh, type of finish, I think that's the proper word. Um, I don't know if it's showing up on the camera, but... 
as I'm rotating the volume, there's parts where you can see the glare from the the light on my phone shining on it, and then there's parts where it's not showing the glare. Like, parts where it's not showing the glare, those are a different type of uh, finish, as opposed to... Uh, Oh, still my cat. As opposed to this, where it's, I think, laminated. But these parts where the light's not shining, those kind of stick out. Uh, same with the, uh... Same with the letters for the, uh, the logo or the title. Those do the same thing where it's different, or the same as, like, say, characters on the cover. But it does that for every volume, Along with the, uh, spine. Like the, uh... Wait, where is it? Yeah, on the spines, the letters and numbers... For the the title of the series, those are doing the light reflecting thing. But everything else, like the Shonen Jump logo, characters that appear on the spine, and the, uh... The author's name, this media logo, those uh, do not do the reflecting thing. Same with the uh, back cover, does the whole reflecting thing. That's pretty neat. Definitely like that. As for stuff that I didn't like, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to bring this up earlier. Um, well, I want to go out and say that I started buying the series in 2010, uh, sometime in December. 2010, that was after I started my first semester of co I mean, at the end of my first semester of college. Uh, about a year or two before that, I played a English patched ROM of Jump Ultimate Stars on the DS, and that's how I found out about Muyo and Roji, along with a bunch of other manga published in Weekly Shonen Jump. Definitely one of the best uh, Shonen Jump crossover fighting games, or just crossover games in general. Um... And then, uh, after I bought Volume 1, at the end of 2010, I sporadically bought the rest of the series between then and 2016. It took me six years to finish buying all the volumes. I was just pretty lazy about it. And, um, I didn't finish reading it until this year, 2017, uh, December 2017. Middle of December 2017. So, it took me six years to buy it all, but seven years to finish reading it. So, I don't remember every single detail. But, um... With that out of the way, things that I disliked, the rush ending thing I mentioned, I think I'm not a fan of that. No, it didn't seem too serious. Not as bad as, uh, what happened with Toriko. Let me tell you, that was, uh, pretty dumb. Uh, uh, disregarding that. Um, I didn't like the rush ending bit at the second to last arc. Um, I don't like how underrated the series is. I barely hear anyone talk about it. I've only seen one person in the manga community on YouTube that has any volumes. I know a guy in Texas that has all 18 volumes. Uh, I know someone on Twitter, she has at least one volume. I forget if she said she had any more than that. But other than them, I don't know anyone else that has this series in their collection. Uh, that just makes me pretty sad. But, uh, this regarding the... Uh, I don't mean to keep saying that. Uh, anyways, yeah, I don't like the uh, rushed ending thing. I don't like how underrated the series is. And I'm hoping that this video will convince people to go out, pick it up, read it, purchase it, check it out, whatever. Just, uh, yeah, as long as more people are talking about it, that's all that matters for me at least. Um, anything else I may or may not dislike, um, I'm gonna have to do a reread since, like I said, I ended up reading it over the span of seven years. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to definitely reread it to see if there's anything that I actually disliked. Um, one other thing I want to mention, at the end of Volume 3, there's a bonus chapter where, uh, Nero, meet Nero, Nero, and Yako, the two main protagonists from Majin Tante no Gami Nero, or Spirit Detective Nero, 
show up. Uh, there, there, there he is. Uh, there's Yakko. There. No, there, there's a better panel with Yakko in it. Um, that series was the first manga done by Yusei Matsui, the creator of Assassination Classroom. This is his second series. Uh, yeah, nice bonus chapter, uh, fan service crossover, so that's cool. Anyways, um, yeah, all I really got to do now is show the volume covers. I hope I get this done before I run out of space again. Uh, anyways, volume one... Volume 2. I could show the backs, but I want to hurry and finish this. Volume 3. And one thing I, I want to point out is on the spine, if they got one or more characters, it's usually whoever's on the front. So these two, they're both on the spine. Volume 4. Volume 5, Volume 6, Volume 7, Volume 8, Volume 9, Volume 10, Volume 11, Volume 12, Volume 13, Volume 14, here comes Volume 15, Volume 16, almost done, two more volumes, volume 17, and lastly, volume 18, that's a nice cover, I like the orange tint to it, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, do I recommend it, uh, definitely, like I said, I consider it to be underrated, it's definitely one of the more underrated manga that I personally know of or and or have read and or own in my collection i definitely recommend people go out check it out it's good stuff if you like supernatural stuff if you like mysteries give it a look it takes a little bit to pick up considering the episodic nature of uh, volume one and half of volume two but everything after that's pretty uh connected for the overall uh, overarching story plot whatever you want to call it um, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it, so, uh, thanks for watching, uh, see you in the next video, if you got any questions or you want to ask me more about it, uh, leave a comment, I'll get back to it as soon as I can, uh, hopefully this will get people to go check it out, check out the series like I said already, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, thanks for watching, see you next video, or whatever, uh, yeah, that's it.